I'm Chris Williams, welcome to my video blog for Tuesday, September the 28th, 2010. Now, I'm in a bit of a hurry, but it's tomorrow I got an appointment with my solicitor. So, uh, this is going to be a very brief blog. I very nearly wasn't going to blog uh, today, but uh, as I do a daily video blog, uh, sometimes I do a written blog as well, but uh, it's mostly video that I do. I uh, feel obliged to uh, voice my opinions about Ed Miliband's debut speech at the... Uh, Labour Party conference today. Uh, I saw a bit of it. I'm not a Labour supporter myself. My family are, but uh, uh, especially I'm a so-called child of faction. No, brought, I'm brought up during the Conservative age. So uh, I, uh, all I know about Labour is that uh, they're to blame for the winter of discontent and because old Labour, as we've seen with Gordon Brown in recent times, makes the nation uh, financially uh, uh, damaged. So, uh, I, I tuned in to listen to what Ed Milburn had to say, and to be honest, he didn't say anything new. Uh, I know that, uh, uh, he, uh, criticised, uh, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, but he's trying to move on to the future, but I think Tony Blair is right with what he said when his autobiography came out, that Labour will be out of power for as long as they are away from the concept of new Labour. Um, Mr. Miliband did impress me when he uh, criticised the unions. He said that the public will not support strikes. The cameramen then shot away to uh, 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 Derek Simpson and Tony Woodley, the uh, joint leaders of the biggest union here in the United Kingdom. They didn't seem very happy. Of course, uh, uh, shades there of Neil Kinnock taking on the unions at uh, a party conference in the past, and that led to the union bosses walking out. They do say that Ed Miliband has uh, got the uh, unions in his pocket, or he's, he's in the pocket of the unions, because he only got in uh, with their support. Here in Wales, where I broke from, apparently only eight of the 40 constituencies voted for Ed Miliband, and the rest voted for David. And the speculation at the time I recorded this book, apparently David is going to quit frontline politics. If I were him, uh, that would be a good idea, because I think that the... Uh, uh, Labour Party are going to spend some time in the wilderness. Um, th there's another party that, yep, yeah, Pride Cymru, same thing going on with them here in Wales. You've got David Wigley saying, oh no, I'm too busy to be involved with Pride Cymru, so I'm not going to come back for retirement. You've got Adam Price stepping down from Westminster to go to the Assembly, but he says, ah, oh, I won't go to the Assembly this year, I'll go some other time. So, those involved in the senior party management here in Wales, the Bright Company, they think that the party's going through a downturn, so they're sort of keeping away from things, and then they're going to come back when it goes wrong. Uh, so, uh, it's, a, it's a snub to the current management, but uh, they're sort of making themselves elusive so that people are sort of saying, ah, oh, we want this person who is turning away from the party, we want them to come back and rescue things. I think that's what David Miliband is going to do. Of course, David Cameron could do a bit of mischief making. He could offer him uh, some kind of ambassador role uh, in America. Um, and of course, bear in mind, of course, it's only been recently that uh, the man on the street has uh, correctly identified who Nick Clegg is. But now you've got Nick Clegg, David Cameron and Ed Miliband all roughly the same age, all with the same colour hair, all with the same build. It's going to get very confusing for those who aren't into politics. Uh, right, so that, that's all I want to say about Ed Miliband, very briefly before uh, we finish this book for today. Uh, you might have seen a previous book where I said about an intruder that came into this accommodation, and indeed I've been worried about my window to the side of me, and I've been worried that someone could smash the window and sort of break an entry. So, let me show you what I've done to my room. Right, normally there's a cupboard behind my head, and as you can see, it's not there now. Indeed, it's to the side of me, in the way of the window. So, very clever of me. So, fridge freezer that's appeared in previous videos. Here's the cupboard that's normally behind me. Indeed, those boxes normally behind my head. And indeed, where, the, where this computer used to be positioned before I moved things around, uh, it used to be positioned on that table over there, but then I sort of put the computer on this table that allows me to 
plug in the webcam all the time, so that's moved over. In fact, it makes my room seem a lot bigger than it was, uh, than it seems previously. And of course, my bed in its normal position, and then there's the door, which you will recognise if you've been watching my blogs from the beginning. That used to be behind me when I used to uh, blog with the computer on my computer stand. Okay, bit of boring information for you there, but uh, if you're a regular, I thought I'd share that with you. Okay, so, so I blog on a daily basis, it's mostly video blogs, but if I'm short of time, it's written blogs on musingsofchrisblooms.blogspot.com, and indeed you'll find this video deposited on that blog. Okay, thanks for your time, and until next time, it's bye for now. Bye bye.